Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and today we're making bunting flags or pennant flags, depending on where you live. I'm going to show you two different pattern sizes so you can use little ones for baby rooms and large ones for celebrations, weddings, whatever. But it sure brightens up the room, doesn't it? I love them. And by using only one piece of fabric, it makes them look really nice and organic. So keep watching and I'm going to show you how we made these flags. I'll be showing you how I make my two templates for a small one that will fit beautifully over a little cribber nursery and one larger for hanging say from a wall to a wall. Now if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I love my cutting mats and my omni grid rotors and my rotary cutters. That's why I do almost everything, whether it be fabric or paper. If you don't have that, don't fret. You can use just an ordinary pair of scissors to cut your patterns as well. You will be wanting a pair of sewing scissors though to cut into our little grooves and to cut out your fabric pieces. If you are using your rotary cutters for fabric and paper, I would recommend you designate one for paper and one for your fabric because paper will dull your blade for your fabric. So keep your fabric one good and sharp. And the one I'm using for my paper is a Kai rotary cutter. The Kai works a little differently than the Ulfus. It has a protective guide here and when you apply pressure onto your surface this drops down and your blade will cut the surface that you want cut. And I'll be starting both my pattern pieces from a recycled piece of computer paper. I always recycle mine and it makes a use and this is obviously an eight and a half by eleven standard size computer paper. And you'll be wanting a few pins to hold on your pattern pieces to your fabric. You can use any fabric you choose. You can use solids, you can use patterns. Just fit the theme that you want to go with, whether you want pink or blue or wedding or showers, it doesn't matter. I just so happen to like the texture in these particular fabrics. They're more like a very light upholstery fabric and they have a really nice kind of grain that you can see in them. And many different things you can use to hang your bunting or your pennant flags, string, rope or cording, ribbon, but I wouldn't go any more than 3 16th of an inch or five millimeters so you can get it through your top casing. Or you can use jute twine or macrame cord. And this is, happens to be three millimeter and that's what I'm going to be using today. Let's start with the largest flag. So we're going to just take our one piece of paper, fold it with the long sides coming together. And you're going to fold this in half and just crease. Open that up. I'm going to take advantage of my cutting mat and use up my guides here and I'm going to measure down half an inch. I'll write centimeters in my video later. The reason I'm doing this with my ruler, because now I can use my edge of my ruler to make that crease on my paper and just bring it along and crease. This makes for an easy way to fold that one down. So now we can fold that down. We fold it down half an inch and then we're going to fold down once more Go this way so my hands aren't in the way and fold down again. And that is going to form the casing on the top of our flag. Once we've got that folded down, let's fold it back in half again on that crease line. We're going to cut from the open edge from this corner to this corner. Now, if you're not using a rotary cutter, you can choose to come down with a pen and then just mark it and then come in with your paper scissors and cut that off. But I've got the rotary cutter handy here, 
So I'm going to just come straight in with my rotary cutter and cut that off. We have now made our pattern. Now you'll notice that when this opens up, you'll get a little notch on both sides, which is perfect because what you're going to be doing is this part will fold in and that's where we're going to be sewing our edge for our decorative overcast stitch and then this is going to be coming down and that will form a casing to insert your string or cording. And for your little one to go in a nursery, then you're going to cut your piece of paper six inches by five inches. Six inches long, five inches wide. Again, let's fold this in half, long edges together, and crease. And exactly the same for the top, you can open that up. And if you, if you don't have a mat, then come in with a, a ruler, just measure out your half inch and your inch, and then draw your line and then do your folds. But I just find this so much easier. Again, fold it in half. And making sure you've got your open edges because you're going to cut from that corner to this corner. And now you've got your little template for your nursery. Now if you want to cut lots of flags at once, I suggest you fold your fabric in half which actually is one, two, three, four layers. Just make sure that your bottom fabrics are all even. And I believe this one here was a bit shorter. And once you've got your bottom nice and straight, then you know that this little piece here we cut at six inches. So what I'm going to do is come right up to the six and we'll cut this off. I'm going back and forth with my rotary cutter because this is really hard fabric to cut and my blade is a little bit duller today. So sometimes if you might get a couple little strands there that don't want to cut, like in here. There we go. And now if you don't have a um, a cutting board, rulers and rotary cutters, then by all means you can come in and pin this all in and then cut it out with a pair of good scissors. But being that I do have a rotary cutter, I will go ahead and use it. Now I'm going to come up to this one right close to my pattern piece. And I'm just going to move that off a bit because I don't want to cut into my paper pattern. I can bring it back again and I'm ready to cut my second side. And just carefully pop that back down on your pattern piece and you're ready to cut your second side. I'm sorry if my arm gets in the way here or my hand for cutting. And then once you've got that done, come in and just put one pin in the top because we need to manually cut out our corners. So just pick that up. Make sure all your pieces are still nicely together. And then come in with your sharp scissors come into the point and come into the point. And the same for the other side. And you've now cut out four flags all at once. Now if you want to repeat that and cut even more, you're going to reverse it 
place it upside down like so and you're ready to cut four more. Place on your ruler and we're ready to cut four more. Repeat the process of cutting out your corners. And now I didn't show you this. I should have done this properly. So if you're going to do a lot of these, I would advise that you come in and just put a couple little pins here and there just to hold all your layers together. I should have done that, but I wasn't planning on cutting more. I only need eight of them. So again, of course, you would come in, reverse it, cut more, reverse it, cut more. And if you run out, then you just open it up and then you'll have probably a little bit more to cut your last triangles. So that's how you cut multiples. And pressing is always your friend. Right side is down, wrong side is up. On this particular fabric, you wouldn't know the difference, but if you do have a fabric that you have a wrong or right side, then of course you want the wrong side facing you. So just iron down that half inch and over again. And press all your tops for all your flags. You can finish your edges three different ways. If you have a zigzag, fold down just the one half inch, start up on here, zigzag down to the point and then it's very difficult to come up from an edge like this for sewing so then you want to come back up to the top but you will have to go on your other side and again start at your top and zigzag down and then when you're done you will have this casing to fold over and this is where we'll, we'll stitch along to form our casing. If you don't want to use your machine for doing any fancy work, zigzags or overcast stitches, then you can also come in with a pair of pinking shears and you can pink your edges. And that will help to prevent fraying of your edges. And that's what pinking shears are for. And when you're doing the pinking, then I would suggest you keep that whole edge folded down and just pink all the way up. To the top and the same for the other side and you'll have a nice pink edge and that makes for a nice edge as well and there you go and if you have a machine that can do an overlocking stitch that will be great too on my faf quilt expression i have these overcast stitches and i'm going to choose the number three and this one is a little bit wide. This diagram actually shows exactly how wide it will be, but I don't want it that wide. So I'm just gonna bring it down to four and also bring it up a bit here. That should be about right. And with the faff, it has a really nice little foot here and I can just match up the edge of my fabric to the little red guide here. So that makes it really easy. I'm just folding over my one half inch, not the whole way. And I'll start sewing up here, come down, pivot, and then come down the rest of the way. And there we go. Both sides have been overcast and I can just cut off my little ends here. And when you're finished all your overlocking or zigzag or pinking for your sides, then you're ready to fold down the rest of the half inch to make your casing. And I'm just going to be making a straight stitch really close to my edge all the way down and I'm choosing to sew on my back side so I make sure I catch my casing. And if you want to save some time instead of taking each flag out and then grabbing another one, have the next one ready to go. And then of course 
finish off this one with uh, either a back stitch or a finishing stitch. And then you can lift up your presser foot, grab the next one and get ready to go for the next one. And then once you've got all your flags done, you can just come in and clip them and separate them. And once you're finished sewing all your flags, give them a nice pressing and then we'll be ready to get them all hung. And the person I'm making this for wants six feet of flags with a little bit of spacing. So that's what I've done and I've put out the order I want them to go in. So now all I have to do is prepare my cord and let's thread these up. And I will be using macrame cord to thread these up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, tape here and uh, just put it into a nice point here. Just so it doesn't unravel when I'm threading them all through. Grab my safety pin and we're ready for threading. And starting with my first color, here we go. And of course, leave some left over so you can use this for tying up on the wall. I'll tie a knot just on the end here to keep these contained and then I'll also tie a knot on this end as well so it does not fray out. And here's the larger flags all finished. And I really love how using one layer of fabric and just doing the zigzag or overlock or the overcast stitch just makes it look really nice and organic. And you can see on this one how it's just you know it's naturally fraying but the zigzag is going to hold that together and on the large ones i did do just a zigzag and the small ones i did the overcast stitch so there you go